Well, howdy there, y'all. Yamasaki here. Welcome back to the channel. And today is part 10 of the 1980 Toyota 4x4 pickup preservation. So let's just go ahead and get started. So, since the last video, I have gotten to test drive this thing just a few times. Only put a couple miles on it, just up and down the back roads here. And things are starting to warm up and we're getting pretty close to the end here on this thing guys um, got all the lights situated and I'll go ahead and show you that here in a little bit um, one of the main things that we had to do is when I test drove this thing the first time the drive shaft the front drive shaft I'll actually I'll come over on this side and show you guys so you can get a little bit better of a view Right there, the front drive shaft, when I first put this thing into four-wheel drive, um, I could clearly see, right there's the drive shaft, that it was wobbling back and forth as it was turning. And what that means is that thing was completely wore out. And we actually have the original one right here. And if I were to move this, you guys can hear all that play in that joint right there, that double joint with the U-joints there. That was wobbling back and forth, and so I went and dug out another drive shaft and the one that's in here, and we replaced the U-joint up front because the larger portion connects to the transfer case. So we solved that problem. We also greased the drive shafts. Went ahead and did that. Um, when we first got this thing running, um, I broke it in, running it at around 1500 to 2000 RPMs. And uh, after that 15 minutes, it was a, kind of a disaster. You know, there was antifreeze leaking out because some of the hoses at the bottom weren't completely connected. We were missing a small brass piece that goes into the power steering gearbox and that was letting fluid come all the way out and drip everywhere so went and robbed that off of one of the other trucks you can kind of see down there there's a little puddle down there and that is coming right there where the engine connects to the bell housing. I'm not sure if it's the engine or the transmission itself. The engine's brand new, so I don't think it would be leaking. It might be the transmission seal. I mean, we haven't changed out the fluids yet in the transmission or the transfer case, but I did go and buy oil for that. And both the differentials and the transmission and transfer case all take the same oil, 80-90 gear oil. So I went and got a whole bunch of that. We'll get that solved here soon. Um, let me go ahead and show you guys the lights. Alrighty, so you guys can probably immediately tell the difference here in what's going on. I actually went and bought a new set of headlights. The one over here is the original one because it's still going strong, so I'm just keeping it in there. But I did go ahead and replace this headlight here. Just went to Napa and got one there. I finally actually went on Amazon and I found a set of these front running light reflectors for these old pickups. And they're about 40 bucks, so 20 bucks a piece. A little pricey, but it's brand spanking new, connected right in, and it shines bright. Um I actually did get the tail lights figured out finally. So I got those lenses on now. And what was going on here was the top two here take 1074s, I think, or 1073s, and then the bottom one here actually takes a 1034 or a 1037 because it's got two modes it's got running light mode which is like this and then when you're pressing on the brakes it actuates that other filament that's in the bulb 
and that's how your brakes work. So I got those figured out. I didn't even realize at the time, but there were two connections still under the bed here that weren't connected. And I actually found a bag with these little license plate lights. So I went ahead and installed those. That one needed a little bit of tapping for it to turn on, but it finally did. And I'm actually surprised that the bulbs in these sockets here are actually replaceable, which is actually quite nice because you don't have to replace the whole assembly. So all the lights are working, which is good. I'll actually go ahead and show you guys the brakes the best I can here. So you can see that. Those are working. I don't think I ever showed you guys the dash. The dash is really weak. The dash light. It's a really weak light, so I might have to replace the bulb in there. And then there's one right above the climate control controls, and that does not seem to be working. So I don't know what's going on there. But that is pretty much it for the lights. They're just working all fine and dandy. Looking pretty good. Coming into the engine bay here, we got our battery tie down strap all connected. This one actually goes to the second gen body style 4x4s. As you can see, it's a little bit larger, but all we did is we, uh, it came with its little uh, J bolt right here, connected that, and then we just lined it up, drilled a hole, put a bolt in there, and it's nice and snug. It's not going anywhere. Um, also connected up my choke here. I'm not sure if I showed you guys that in my last video or not. Um, by the way, link down in the description below to part 9. If you guys want to go check that out. Now what we had to do here with my choke is, right here, if you still had all your emission control, smog, EGR stuff, there would have sat a big plate right here and that had a whole bunch of fittings that vacuum lines would go to and everything and it would have connected right here and right here. And this is actually one of the original connections right here and I just went ahead and snipped it off, found the hot wire, wired it up to my electronic choke right there and then just ran a ground here where all these other grounds are. And it seems to be working just fine. Um, as you can see down there, that hose right there, we were missing a little brass insert that went in the steering box there. We actually had to take out my windshield wiper motor today. Um, found out that the splines on the little lever that would move back and forth and move this rod, hence moving your wipers, was completely stripped out, so I got to go rob that off of the SR5 currently having issues getting the hood open so I can't get that out just yet but we gotta diagnose that issue that's pretty much it for the engine bay you guys can probably see there's still a little bit of oil and stuff coming out in places but what I only put what there's maybe two three miles on this engine and it's just started running so everything still need to needs to seal up and everything like that so it all just takes time you know give it a little time and everything will go just according to plan one thing I almost forgot to show you guys was I got finally got the steering wheel cover on and you can probably look at it and not even tell that this is not the original steering column cover this actually came off of the SR5 and it was painted this color blue nice navy blue color um, kind of like these two pieces here So what I had to do is I had to take it off clean it because there was a lot of grime and crap on the bottom plate in here and uh, Went ahead and just cleaned it up with some soap and water let it dry and then I painted it with this stuff and if you guys are looking for a simple paint that matches the original colors 
of the tan that Toyota used in these trucks. This is the stuff, guys. Rust-Oleum Nutmeg is the closest color you're probably going to get to it, spray can-wise. And I used, like I said, I used it on the steering wheel cover. And a long, long time ago, I used it on these running board trim plastics. And it matches really well with all the rest of the other tan components. Just, just a good little hint for you guys. Another thing I got on was I finally got on the mud flaps. This one I believe was original because I found it in a box over there and I had it, had the other one but it disappeared. Um, just takes four bolts, one, two, three, four, and they attach to a plate that comes down behind the tire here. And I also got the other side. Had to go and rob that off of another truck in the backyard. But they're both the right and the left, so they match perfectly. And they're in good shape, too. They actually are in some pretty good shape. They're still malleable. You can still clearly see what brand it is. So that's another nice little thing that we got put on. Still have to put the fender plastics on, and those go right here on your fender, and they attach to these clips up here, and they go all the way down here, and it attaches right here to the body, and it blocks this whole open area underneath your fender. I still got to put those on. Just got to find the right hardware, the screws that go with them. I don't think I have any of those lying around. Still have to paint the exhaust. It's not necessary, but it's probably a good idea to at least paint the bare metal stuff so it doesn't immediately start rusting. And it's some high temp stuff that I got. Um, silver 2000 degree paint, so it should be able to withstand what this little engine's putting out. And so far guys, that's pretty much all I have to show you. This project's pretty much coming to a close here soon. We just got a few more things to do on it, and then we are, throughout the rest of the winter, we are going to build a nice little rack system that goes around. Just, just some angle iron, maybe. Nice headache rack to protect the back. Um, and it, it'll just be a nice point to where if I need to put a motorcycle in the back of here or something, I can hook it up and strap it down. I don't want to use these because, you know, as functional as these are for that intended purpose they they're not so strong that they'll stay in original shape like that and I want to keep it like that so nice little rack system isn't gonna hurt anything alright it's been a minute so I'm just gonna do a little update here on a few things starting the cab here I went ahead and ordered some brand new door handle trims they took a while to get here but they're a little bit darker than all the other tan but it really doesn't matter to me you know as long as it's brand new the old ones were faded and cracking and all that anyway so figured I'd get some new ones and then I also got new window crank handles on both sides as you can see um <clears throat> Also got the speedometer cable hooked up, had to oil it, had to take all this stuff out again, but it was simple enough. Um, having some trouble with the LEDs in the actual gauge cluster. So as you guys can see, it's still really dim. Now, I did go to Napa and buy some, uh, I believe they are 194 bulbs. I bought one LED one, and that's the one you see over here in the corner. And then I bought just some regular ones, and stuck them where I thought some bad ones were but um, it's still too dark so I went ahead and I ordered a brand new 10 piece LED kit so hopefully that'll fix that problem and it'll be nice and bright when that's all done we also got the gauge cluster installed this one's out of that SR5 just went ahead and painted it cleaned up the gauges we had to custom make a bracket over here 
I didn't realize that on one of the other gauge clusters we have that I had that side until last minute. But we uh, made that bracket, had the original one on the other side, and it just, both of them, both of these uh, upper brackets connect to the heater core right there, as you can see. And then we had to make, we had to custom make a bracket down here because on the SR5 it had just a band of metal that went across and up over on that side and then up over on this side and it would have met right at these holes on the cluster but since this was a base model truck and it didn't have this gauge cluster that bracket wasn't there so we went ahead and we custom made one um, it had the holes already in the gauge cluster there so uh, my dad decided to use those two spots as to where to connect it and then we ran it down bent it at an angle drilled a hole through the floor and just put a little 10 millimeter bolt with a nylock right there and it is sturdy as can be it's in there that's pretty much it for the interior wise running around back here we got the bumper on finally got the rear bumper on what we had to do this was interesting what we had to do because of the two inch body lift custom two inch body lift on this thing the uh, bumper brackets back here these guys and they connect up through the frame there right there as you can see um, they were too long so my idea was to build plates right there that were two inches higher and that would raise the bumper but my dad started looking at it and he saw that that wouldn't work that it would interfere with some things on the bed so he came up with the brilliant idea of just chopping two inches out of the brackets and welding them back together and so we did just that and we came out with this result and it looks really damn good the only thing we have to do left on this bumper, as you can see over here, it's kind of bent upwards a little bit more than it should. So our plan is we're going to build like a big metal bar piece that'll fit around here. And we're just going to try and lift it back up, bend it back up. Other than that, we fixed all the bad dents the best we could, like right here and right here. And there was one right here. But the bumper isn't in bad shape at all. We went ahead and got that on. We got new mirrors. Got these off of Rock Auto. And these are just aftermarket replacements for these actual window mounts. So those work beautifully. I also finally did get these fender well plastics on. Just like that. Go around to the other side here. And there's that one. So that's pretty much what we've gotten done over the past couple of weeks. Um, we don't have much left to do. Like we are down to the bare minimum. We are going to start figuring out what we're going to do for shifter boots. And I have vinyl flooring. Oh, I also forgot to mention that I, because this thing, this, this thing isn't loud. It's really not loud. It's got a nice rumble to it. But, um, originally they had some sort of weird foam, fur, fox foam stuff that went up on the firewall here. And that was to keep heat in and cold out and all that stuff. Well, we ripped all that out and this truck never came with any and I ripped it all out of the SR5 but I don't know where it ended up so I ended up buying a whole bunch of these sheets of this thermal deadening material and um, it comes in sheets about this big you know they're not real big I thought they were gonna be bigger but they weren't but they send me sent me a crap ton a box full of them and what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to actually take this adhesive there's adhesive on the back of this stuff, and um, 
you're supposed to stick it on. I didn't want to do that. I really didn't. So what I ended up doing is I just took them, and the weird thing about it is it's got some sort of foil on it that um, allows it to conform to like all shapes. You can see right here, there's a big dent here as compared to that other side. We never got that out, but you can see how it conformed to that dent. And it conformed to the curve here. It's what it's supposed to do, and I just didn't want to connect it, like permanently put it in here in case I needed to ever work on the truck. So I just took three pieces, laid them out, pressed them down, as best I could and conformed them and they're just gonna be under the vinyl and then these carpets are gonna be on top of that of course but I did order some vinyl for the floor because that's originally what they did use they used vinyl you can't really see it but it is a leather type of pattern this is just the back side of what it is so we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, there's really not much left to do, guys. Um, this project is at its bitter end. It's real bitter end. Alrighty, so I'm back to fill you guys in on what's been going on these past couple of weeks. My dad and I have mainly been focusing on the vinyl here and the shifter boots here. I'm going to start with these shifter boots. Now, <clears throat> I don't know if you guys remember in previous videos, um, if you haven't checked out any of the previous videos, every video will have a link to the previous video so you guys can see the entire restoration on this beast. Um, if you guys remember, there was two big holes, or one big hole here um, for these sticks to go in. And what I found out is on the four-speed base model Toyota pickups, no SR5, no five-speed, it had two holes. One here, and it was kind of offset a little bit because the stick on the transmission was on the side. As compared to this five-speed here, the stick is in the middle. So that's hole, that hole was offset a little bit to the right. And then this here, the transfer case hole, was just centered in the middle here. And it was divided by a piece of metal that was factory built into the cab. It was part of the cab. And um, we ended up having to cut that piece of metal out when we were lifting the cab onto the frame because these sticks were having trouble getting in. And um, we had to figure out a way to seal these up. <clears throat> and we found, I found this... Uh, shifter boot assembly from one of the other trucks and what we ended up having to do is because of that big hole I will take this piece of vinyl trimming off here what we had to do is we had to build a plate built a plate out of some gauge steel and we made those holes really really small but everything still works everything still shifts the way it needs to shift so we're all good there and we ended up making those holes smaller uh, cutting out this plate here silicone on the bottom and then we pop riveted it where there was original holes already in to the cab and then after we did that we uh, modified that plate just a little bit to stick this shifter boot cover on and we actually used just some steel screws for construction like construction you can see one there and two up there and it's sturdy as a rock guys it's not going anywhere so that's what we had to do for the shifter boot part of this project. Um, and then, as you guys can notice, I bought some leather vinyl for this stuff that I showed you guys in the last couple of updates. Now, originally what Toyota did, guys, is from the factory, they originally did have coating in the cab. But it wasn't as heavy-duty stuff like this. It was more like some sort of weird plastic rubber stuff that they just kind of formed to the whole cab and um, there are certain spots where they didn't do that like right there that's original paint and everything but everywhere where I have put Herculiner that's where they put that coating and then when it came to the vinyl and the uh, you know the interior and making it all nice they went really really basic they just built or cut out a piece of vinyl that came from the front of the seats here and a little bit up to the firewall. That was it. And everything else was cut out that needed to be, but that was it, guys. They never glued it in place. They just set it in there and they forget about it. And um, it, so it wouldn't have had any 
trim pieces like I've made here. And no, it's not perfect, you know, there's lines here and all that, and I could take a million years to um, make it all uniform and everything, but this is already looking really good as is, and um, it's coming along great, so I'm not worried about any of that. But this is all just one piece. I cut it out a little too far where these boots went, so we cut out this piece here. We're going to um, adhesive this to this part of the vinyl, and um, this is another piece here. This is another piece back here. So I kind of, you know, put, put pieces of vinyl where it needed to be and everything. So that's pretty much for the interior wise. We still have to do this part here. We're going to also do that with this leather stuff. And um, we're also going to build a nice little cone boot that goes right here to seal all this up, make it look nice. But aside from that, the... Uh, the cab or the interior part is pretty much done. I was able to get some new LED lights so we actually have functioning LED lights in the dash now. They're not the same color, no, but I can see them perfectly fine and that's the important part. So that is pretty much the inside. Coming down we still have a small leak coming from what I now know is the transmission. Um, it's coming from that front seal. So what I ended up doing is doing a little bit of research. I went ahead and I bought some of this stuff called AT205 Reseal. And this is apparently the best stuff you can get to reseal old worn out seals in your engine and transmissions. You can put it in your engine, your transmission, your differentials, power steering, and hydraulic systems. So anything that uses seals, you can pretty much put this stuff in. But it does tell you, don't put it in your damn brake system. That's not a smart decision. So hopefully, with just driving this thing around with that AT205 in the transmission, it'll hopefully seal up that seal. And if eventually we got to pull the transmission and replace that seal, we will. It will be kind of a tricky bitch, but it's got to be done if it's got to be done. But it doesn't leak too much. You know, that's a small puddle. There's about two and a half quarts of oil in those transmissions. So it's not bad. It's not real bad. Um, really the only other thing I have to show you guys is these lug nuts here. Um, had a whole bunch of mismatched lug nuts throughout the four wheels. So I ended up buying these nice chrome ones off of Amazon. And they all look really sharp. They really do. But aside from that, guys, that is pretty much all I've got to show you for now. We pretty much have left, if I can find my little sheet here of everything we've had to do, this is everything that we've done since that date right there. And pretty much what we have left to do is we've got to straighten the bumper right here. It's just a little crooked, you can see. So we just got to build something to go around it and kind of bend it back just a hair. That will be pretty simple. Um, I also replaced the temp sensor in my manifold. So that is done. Um, Pretty much the only things we have left, a couple of cab holes still need to do. Still need to finish up that shifter boot. Um, we've got the e-brake, and then that is pretty much it, guys. We've got a few things left. But aside from that, this truck is almost done. And then it's going to be on to the rack system. Hell yes. Alright, so it's been a hot minute, and the truck's pretty much done. This is the rack that we have built, and I unfortunately haven't had time to document the whole process, but we pretty much just bought the metal, cut it to fit, measured everything, and this is what we pretty much come up with. Just a nice basic overall rack. Um, hopefully going to get it on tomorrow, 
Got to cut some wood pieces. My dad's trick when he always built his racks for his truck is he took what he said he had a thin strip of wood that he put right under this lip here. So there wouldn't be metal on metal. You wouldn't have the rack sitting directly on the bed, scratching it up, getting it rusty in between there and all that, which is actually pretty smart. And he would cover it in contact cement, he said. So we're actually gonna use these two by fours and cut the ends, maybe about an eighth of an inch. This right here is my little flag tie down. I don't think I've shown you guys the flag in previous videos. Or clips, I'm not sure. But if I haven't, you'll be seeing that. Um, took us, oh, what, about four days to build? Four or five days to build. So not too bad. But yeah, next time you guys see the truck, I think she's going to be done. Well, guys, this is it. The moment you've all been waiting for. The final reveal of the 1980 Toyota 4x4 pickup. Now before I actually get into showing you guys the truck, I will just say that it's been, oh, a good couple of months since the truck's actually got done. And I've been driving it regularly and it does have its problems. For being a 43 year old truck, it just comes with being an old truck. So I will go into depth on everything that, you know, it's little quirks and tweaks and whatnot. But without further ado, let's get into it. You guys are going to have to excuse the background noise of all the cars. I am next to the highway, just on the back roads out behind the house. But here it is, guys. Here is the 1980 Now it is pretty much for the most part done. The only real other thing that we have to build is for the rack system which you see here. We were planning on putting some arches and I'd like to make it to where those arches can fold up make some bigger walls so I can haul more cargo and sleep in the back of this thing if I ever need be. It is warmed up. I had to drive it down here but I hardly ever have to use choke. I just turn the key and it fires up in a split second. Still have the transmission leak. I really don't think I'm going to be able to fix that unless I pull the transmission. But yep, you can see right there. Just maybe. There is a little bit of oil dripping. So, really the only way to, you know, solve that is to pull the transmission, replace that front seal. But as long as I keep up on, you know, keeping it full and everything it, it runs and drives just fine um, I'll pop the hood for you guys and show you what I did there and I will fire this up for you guys too as well excuse the mess I do use this as my work truck I drive it to work every day and as you guys know oh, give me just a minute guys get the hood up here it's not the world's most perfect restoration it was never meant to be it was meant to be the best truck we can make possible with what parts we had it does have a little bit of oil coming from the front right here I'm not sure where I keep it clean try and pressure wash it as often as I can um, but for the most part I checked the oil and it doesn't really seem to be burning any I mean, it's, I always see on these old 20Rs and 22Rs, there's always a whole bunch of oil caked up on the front here and everything else. Um, I did buy this block off plate because I didn't have one originally and it was, uh, the hole in here actually was just covered in whatever the hell 43 years put in there. Um, I did come to find out, you can see all the carbon down in here, kind of. Come to find out, it sounded like a tractor when, when I was, you know, revving up and everything. And finally, uh, I went and checked all the nut, or all the bolts on my exhaust, on my header, and they were all loose. So I went ahead and tightened those up. And also down there, I don't know if you can really see, maybe all those nuts and bolts down there that connect the headers 
to the actual exhaust pipe they had fallen off to just from rattling around and everything so I replaced those now it's actually fairly quiet with the, uh, the glass pack on it the radiator isn't leaking um, I think I still do have a moderate power steering leak I did put some AT205 in it so I'm not sure what's going on there just gonna have to keep up on keeping that filled another one of its quirks the mirrors like to move around a lot they're not the original mirrors but these are the original mounts um, one of the other quirks is this thing the uh, light switch is it doesn't click it just uh, kind of moves around and that has to do with the fact that I think this was the original well this is the original steering column so this is the original turn signal and what the guys did is you can see here there's a gap why is that because this thing if I can move it moves forward like that and so the tape was there for a reason and uh, there was actually a spring in here so that tape was there to keep this from falling back and pressing back um, I only get defrost heat one of my cables isn't properly hooked up or something like that I'm not entirely sure but I really don't plan on driving this thing in the winter why because everybody who owns a Toyota like this or a second gen body style or anything knows that these things rust and I'm not gonna let this thing rust on the rack never really showed you guys how we mounted this thing but uh, what we did is we took some 2x4 pieces of wood about you know, quarter of an inch we placed it on the bed we took some I'm not sure what this stuff is that we put underneath but it's just to seal it up and the reason why we did this wood here is because my dad recommended or the way at least he did all of his racks on his trucks is he never let the rack and the bed meet metal bare metal um, you always want something there because then you won't get rust you won't get moisture um, we don't care if the rack rusts out that's why we didn't put any of that goop between the wood and the rack but we did put it in between the bed and the wood because we don't care about the rack if the rack rusts out we can build another one the bed however that's a different story if that ever were to happen now I did put a flag pull on here and it worked for a little bit it still does um, the flag kind of fell apart but one night I was coming home and I had my other top piece which is lying over there um, it hit the carport and actually it didn't break this Chinese piece of crap flag pole that I bought off of Amazon no it broke my dad's weld amazingly so I'm gonna have to uh, I'm gonna have to um, Strip the paint there, get the rust out, and re-weld it, so that's no biggie. It, it's still holding on really strong, surprisingly, for how cracked it is. Got new lug bolts, lug nuts. I will fire it up for you guys. I won't be able to do a drive, just for the fact that I have no way of really showing you guys how to do that, or how to do that. But, it runs really good. Runs like an old Toyota. Now the one thing is too is, I don't, maybe you guys know what, what's going on, but I'll go around to the exhaust. It misfires fairly often at idle. And you can kind of hear it. could be bad because this carburetor has been sitting for a long time not being used forever until we actually put it on the truck so it could be that I don't think our timing's off because we fix that because it runs like a top um, 
we'll give it some RPMs here so you guys can actually hear what it sounds like now. Sounds pretty darn good, I'll say. Oil pressure's good. Volts are good. Temperature gauge doesn't really work. I don't know if you guys can see that. Temperature gauge doesn't really like to work. It'll maybe go up a sliver past the white there. Um, replace the thermostat, replace the temp sensor, so it's got to be the actual gauge itself. And I actually broke my other speedometer trying to uh, rewind the miles on it to make it zero because the engine's rebuilt on this thing. I ended up breaking the, the tiny fragile gears within that system and so I had to replace it with this one and this is actually the original mile tachometer and speedometer for this truck meaning it only had 91 uh, 90 about 90,000 miles um, originally before it was ever even torn down and me and my dad actually went and picked it up and I actually put a little label here to remind myself that once it reaches over a hundred thousand there's a certain amount of miles that have already been on it so I've hardly put it's got right now 91,581 miles and the uh, the little tag I had said that it read 90,655 so I almost have put only really a thousand miles on this truck and it runs flawlessly aside from that slight little misfire um, it drives like an old Jeep guys it really does it drives like an old truck you know solid front axle it's not the most comfy ride in the world but I really do not care it's just a really good truck well guys, I really do hope you enjoyed this video series on preserving this 1980 Toyota pickup. Um, it's been one of the biggest projects I've ever taken on and I finally got it done after nine years. It's been about nine, ten years since I actually started this project and it's finally done. And um, I've made these video series step by step the best I could. So if any of you out there are working on your own 1980 Toyota pickup, you've got some references here to see what you actually need to do. They're not complicated trucks at all. They're really simple. They're just, they're an old truck and that's what I like. I like, I like my old trucks. But I hope you enjoyed this video guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment on the content in the Amasaki app. Thank you.